from One Thing, No 10,000, Miyamoto Musashi. Of course, what Musashi is telling us there is we can apply the lessons that we learn from the small into the big, from the big into the small. Being able to read one chart well means that you can read other charts. And again, focusing as we do each and every day on just five charts, that is the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, 20-year bonds, gold, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> and Bitcoin. <clears throat> there we go. I don't know why I couldn't get that out. Focusing on those charts every day, you can take what you learn here and apply it to your favorite stocks and ETFs. We encourage you to look for those. The main thing is they have to be trackable. They have to move. They need to be liquid. That means the between the bid and the ask needs to be slight so that you're not getting into a big hole the minute you jump in. And again, not hard to find. So work every day, 10 to 15 minutes from one thing, no 10,000. Now you see up on the screen, a lot of you guys like this over the weekend. We shared with you before that Labor Day weekend in the States, a number of various commodities that I like to look at. When I hear the news and I hear people going on, now you guys know every day you see what's happening with gold and you have a feel for that. But when you have people saying gasoline prices, you have them talking about natural gas, have them talking about winter coming, what's wheat going to be? What about sugar? What about corn? What about coffee? All those things, you can go look up these ETFs. They exist. It's not hard. UGA shows you what's going on with gas. When Joe Biden took office back in January of 2021, and he took office that Tuesday, I think, or Wednesday. I think it was Tuesday. I think that's when the president gets sworn in. That would have been the 20th because the week started the 19th. You can see where UGA was. If you look at the top of the screen, you can see it opened at $25.30, closed at $26.50. Now you can track how much it has gone up to where it hit its peak. Now, again, from $25 all the way back in January up to a high. This is pretty unbelievable. Almost 80 bucks. In fact, it did. It hit a high of $80.29. So from $25 to $80. Now, it has been tracking since its peak back on the week beginning the 6th of June. It has been going down, 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 down. Where did it close today? It closed at 53.61. So it's still over double what it was all the way back in January of 2021. But you can see it has been going down. When you hear these things, my friends, if you're learning how to trade, you're empowering yourself to know what's going on in the world. You don't have to listen to those talking heads on the news and take what they tell you as the gospel. Many times it isn't. By the time they start telling you about it, it's already peaked. Now, as we look at where wheat is, we can see wheat has bottomed out and it started to move up over the last couple of weeks. So you can keep an eye on wheat and see where it is going. The same with something like soybeans, big in feedstocks. You can see where soybeans peaked out it popped up real strong back in April, about mid-April, and then again early June. Dropped off, built up through last week, and this week started to move down some again. So just something important for you to pay attention to. Things like sugarcane, and again, a lot of these, um, th these are easy symbols to remember. Cane for sugarcane, soy bee for soybeans, wheat, W-E-A-T, of course, oil, U-G-A. We look at things like sugarcane. Where is it? Well, we can see where it peaked back in April, dropped up again, and then down since then. You can see where corn is. Of course, corn provides all sorts of things for us in the States. been going up after it peaked back in late April and rolled over. It's starting to move up again. So you can see all of these things, of course, copper is something, shows you, you can see where, you know, and again, copper is used a lot in industry, peaked back in February, slid sideways, then dropped, tried to gain a little traction, dropped again, and of course, over the last two weeks, dropping off below the 200 EMA. So 
These are on weekly charts. It's showing you what's going on on these things. Uh, we look at things like coffee. I drink a lot of coffee. I like to know where coffee is. Well, coffee's off its highs, but it has been going up over the last few weeks. And this one is sort of the scary one. This is natural gas. So many, so much of our power here in the States is now relying on natural gas. Our overflow power station near where I live was coal converted over to natural gas. We can see where natural gas peaked at a super high of 34.50. And again, if we go back in time to, uh, I mean, you know, not so long ago, you can see just how low natural gas was. I mean, back on the 19th of January, it was $7, $8, a high of, well, it looks like a high of 962, opened at nine, well, 962 and a high of 962. That's when it, where it opened. And where has it hit a high on? I mean, that's just some crazy, crazy levels. The latest high recently from 962 to 3189. And again, dropped strongly so far this week, down 9.48% just today. So glad to see that happening with winter coming. So again, you hear things in the news, my friends. Look at these charts. You can figure out what's going on, and you can not have to believe the hype. So let's jump into our charts today. Just, uh, just wanted to share that with you, maybe f let you feel a little bit empowered and why it's important to know how to chart things and to understand what's really going on in the world so you don't get sucked into all the hype. Everything on our charts down for the day. S&P, NASDAQ 100, 20-year bonds, gold, and Bitcoin. And when we look at things, we can see again where markets had topped most recently back in mid-August, rolled over, slid sideways, and then pushed through that 200 EMA and back down on SPY. We did a nice trade on the way up back in uh, almost mid-August when things, uh, just before things peaked. And again, had opportunity, not, not, an opportunity to jump in when things rolled over because we're above the 200 EMA. Haven't had a pull up yet to give us a trigger to pull back into the markets. Two day, of course, is heading down weekly. Not yet rolled over on the STC. We'll be waiting, seeing when that happens on the S&P 500. NASDAQ 100, very similar story to the S&P 500 hasn't given us a trigger because, of course, it was above the 200 EMA when it rolled over. Again, we have to trade with the trend. It needs to be below it for us to be able to get into a down move. So we've not shorted the NASDAQ 100 yet either. We have the two-day heading down and the weekly not yet rolled over, still above the 200 EMA. So we'll continue to wait, watch, and see as things move along. Let's move on to 20-year bonds, see where they are. Let me stretch this chart out a little bit uh, so you can see what's happening. We'll bring, uh, we'll spread this out some too so we can see things a little better. You can see that we did jump into this down move. We did have a trigger. We're below the 200 EMA. Gave us an, a, uh, an, a, the ability to jump in with that strong down move back on the 1st of September. We jumped in, things slid sideways, and then dropped over the course of the day. We are waiting to hopefully garner a 2.59% uh, gain. And you might say, wait a minute, Tom, how are you making money when something goes down? You don't buy something and then let it crash. No, you don't. In fact, we have two ways to make money if you know how to buy and sell put options that is a possibility for you to practice trade those or you can go into an inverse fund on TLT you happen to have TBF Tango Bravo Fox Trot what is that that is the ProShares single inverse and lo and behold look what it's been doing you can see the price is different yes it is different not nearly as expensive as TLT but it is set up by the people who manage this short fund to track the movement of TLT percentage by percentage in the opposite. So if TLT is going down, 
TBF is going up, and that's exactly what we see happening. So that's what we practice trade and buy. You need to practice this so you understand it. Inverse funds have all sorts of potential issues. The fees are higher. They recalibrate more often. And again, it, we lots of trainings on that. Just encourage you to practice trade it. Give it a try. See what you can do. We've got a great training on inverse funds, how to make money when markets crash. I'll put that at the end of today's video for those of you not familiar with it so you get a better feel. So we are in that. We look at the two-day chart. Where is it? It, of course, is going down also. And the weekly, it has not yet gone red on the STC, but you can see even on the weekly on 20-year bonds, we are well below the 200 EMA. Now, let's move from there. We'll leave that trade a running. We'll take a look at where we are on gold. We captured a nice 1.5% down move when gold first took off, heading down, rotating over. Gave us the opportunity to jump in right there. Gold then tracked down a little bit further, popped up, and then rolled back over. We didn't have the STC move back up as it has to before we jump in. It has to clear this center spot here of a little darkened area. Did not do that, so we didn't ride this latest portion down, waiting for it to reset. We look at where things are on the two-day. Of course, the two-day is heading down also below the 200 EMA and red on the STC. And on the weekly, gold is moving down to a potential pierce with the candle itself on the 200 EMA. So we'll keep an eye on gold, see where it is going. That's where we are. Lastly, we'll go to Bitcoin. Oof. Bitcoin down again, my friends, 5.91%. And again, red on the STC. We are not in Bitcoin. We've not been advising any practice trades in Bitcoin itself. Uh, it has, and again, if you look where it's bottomed, look at this low. That low is 1817. We look at where it is today, 1815. It punched just two cents lower. We're going to find a bottom and a base here. That would be nice. But if it clears that and keeps hammering down, not so good. Um, that's where we are on the two-day. We look at the weekly. And of course, it's been in the red quite a while. So hopefully Bitcoin's going to find a bottom. I would love for it too. I don't want to see it just keep crashing. But we are not going to go long in Bitcoin until and unless we see things find a bottom and start moving up. You guys who've been with us, you've seen how accurate these charts have been for us in the past with Bitcoin. And we are going to continue to help you see those things in that chart and successfully practice trade. Remember, not a stock calling service, not a gold, not a Bitcoin, not a bond calling service. We're an education firm. I want you to practice with us because how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. That's what it's all about. You got to learn by doing. You have questions, problems, concerns? We love to hear from you, my friends. CW at chartingwealth.com. Patreon members, God bless you. Thank you for all your support. You want to learn how to trade options. You want to be able to practice trade those things to your heart's content. If you join at any of the three levels at our Patreon page, you get three-part series, Options Made Simple, the Charting Wealth Way. Patreon members, don't forget, next week we have for you the live question-answer call-in session on Wednesdays where we endeavor to answer all your questions. Chart the stocks and ETFs. You're interested in us helping you backtrack for you to practice trade. That's where we are, folks. God bless all the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.